We are going to build our own custom web component using just vanilla JavaScript in this video. And if you are familiar with uh, front-end web development, you know that uh, components are a regular or a regular, a, a common design pattern in uh, libraries such as React, Vue, Svelte, or frameworks such as uh, Angular to basically create reusable pieces of code that consists of your markup, styling, or also any uh, additional JavaScript functionality. Now we are not going to use any of those uh, fancy libraries. Uh, we are going uh, we are going to use the Web Components API, which is basically a specification that allows us to build uh, custom web components using JavaScript classes, uh, the Shadow DOM, and uh, HTML. And uh, basically, the general approach to building your uh, custom web component is we create a JavaScript class. We register that custom element to uh, uh, so that the browser understand our comp basically our custom HTML tag. And then we attach the shadow DOM to that custom element, and we add additional child elements, uh, event listeners, if we want to uh, to that shadow DOM. And then we can also define an HTML template using the template tag, and then we clone that template and attach that to the shadow DOM. Now this may not mean anything to you as of now, but while we are coding, this might hopefully make more sense to you. Now the Shadow DOM, uh, if this is the first time you hear about the Shadow DOM, the Shadow DOM is basically, um, it serves as uh, encapsulation for our custom components. So we have our document tree structure, and let me actually search up an image for this. So uh, I think I have it. If I search for shadow DOM, it should, yeah, using shadow DOM. So, so you have a clearer picture of what the shadow DOM is. Let me scroll down to, I think I scrolled by oh yeah, this image right here. So we have our document tree over here where we have our regular DOM, uh, with our regular DOM uh, elements or uh, yeah, HTML elements over here. But we also have the shadow host where we can attach the shadow root, which will basically uh, have the, a, a tree of its own with our custom uh, components or elements. And everything here is encapsulated or and separated away from uh, the rest of the DOM. So that means that any type of markup, uh, any type of JavaScript functionality and styling uh, doesn't affect the rest of our code. What we are going to build is a simple start page uh, with yeah, these custom uh, elements over here. I'm going to call them web elements that uh, will be linking us to uh, our any website that we want it to link to. So what I'm going to do right here is create a class. I'm going to call it web element and it's going to extend from the uh, HTML element. Now you can extend from any HTML tag that you uh, probably know uh, if you want to customize those, but we just want a generic HTML element. So that's what we are going to extend from. Then we're going to call the constructor and also call the super method. Now in our super method, we want to attach our, or inside of our constructor, I mean, we want to attach uh, the shadow down and we can do that by the, with the attach shadow property and pass in an object uh, with the mode value and set that to open. And this basically allows us to interact with the shadow DOM. And then what I also want to do is basically create a new element, uh, the, the template tag, and we can uh, do that with regular, uh, with regular uh, uh, JavaScript DOM, man uh, DOM manipulation methods. So I'm going to call this property template and then document create, create element. And I want to create the te template tag. And then I'm going to have a render function where I access this template property and set the inner HTML to whatever markup uh, I want. Now, the markup that I want is basically what I have uh, over here. So I'm going to comment all of these out. So yeah, all the way to here. If I save that, we only have one left. Yeah. And that one I want to 
copy and set that as the value for our inner HTML. And uh, I also need to fix the indentation. So let's see if this is, yeah. Okay, so that should be good enough. Uh, and then we need to append this to our to the shadow DOM, and we can access that using the shadow root. So again, going back to that image, we have attached our uh, the, yeah our shadow DOM or our shadow root, and now with with the shadow root we can basically uh, do uh, anything anything that we would normally do. So like, for example, we could, with the document, we could append child. This time we want to attach it to the shadow DOM. So at the root of our shadow uh, DOM or the shadow root, we want to append child. And what we want to append is our template. So just the template property. And we will also want to append any uh, uh, children or descendants. So we can do content and then clone node. It's pass in the value true. Now, we also want to register our uh, component so that the browser understands our component or is aware of it. And we can do that with custom elements, define, and then we pass in first the name of our component. And the convention is to uh, use something like your uh, initials, company name, uh, if you have one, and then uh, followed by a dash and then whatever your uh, component name uh, uh, you want to give it. So I'm going to call TG and then web element. And then you want to pass in as the second argument your actual component, so web element. Now, if I save this, let me double check if I haven't forgotten anything. No, there's still one method that I need to add, and that's the connected, connected callback. Uh, method. Now the connected callback method is a lifecycle callback uh, function and this is invoked whenever our component is first loaded onto the uh, document. So for example if I do console log over here and I say hi friend and I go to the uh, yeah to my uh, server I open up my console log uh, my console inside the developer tools and I save this. Um, it's not going to show anything yet because I haven't added this um, HTML tag to the uh, markup. So let me also comment this one out. Oh, this as well. So now we can add this custom HTML tag or component, TG web element. Now, if I save again, now you can see hi friend, and that comes from our connected callback function again. So again, this is invoked whenever our component is first loaded uh, onto the uh, page. Now, what I want to call here, instead of just uh, console log hi friend, I want to uh, call the render function that we, or the render method that we have here above. So if I save this, Now we have uh, our markup over here. Now, as you see, the styling has disappeared. And again, that's because we, uh, as it says here on the top, um, an important aspect of the web component is encapsulation, being able to keep the markup structure, style, and behavior hidden and separate from other code on the page so the different parts do not clash and the code can uh, be kept nice and clean. So it doesn't pick up any styling that we have defined in our index.css file. So what we can do, if we want to style our component, we can add, uh, basically we can add style tags over here inside of our inner HTML like this. And then for example, I uh, want to set the header one to, uh, the header one to uh, red, for example. If I would do that, it will change the header to one. Now that's one way uh, that we can do it, but I don't really like to uh, uh, basically have the style inside of uh, the inner HTML over here. Uh, 
So what we can do is we can create another element over here and I'm gonna call it link. So another property over, uh, I mean, and then this property will create an element called, uh, yeah, create the linked uh, tag. And then I also want to append this to our uh, shadow DOM. So shadow root, append child, and then just uh, this dot link. We don't have to do a deep clone because this is just one uh, uh, HTML element. And then what I want to do, I'm going to access the uh, link property that we have appended. And I want to set an attribute over here, which has a key value uh, argument over here. Or so two, uh, par two parameters or two arguments, I mean. First is the key. So for example, the rel. And then the value, which will be style sheet for this link tag. And then the next one is the href. And I'm going to have a style sheet called web components, web component.css. So I'm going to open that one up. So web component CSS. I already created that file. I just need to paste in some CSS over here. So I'm going to add this reset from here. And let's see the actual styling for our component. I'm going to delete that from here and paste it in here. And I think that should be it then. Yeah, and I need to save our global CSS as well. And as you can see right here, uh, it's now loaded. The style is being uh, imported as well from our uh, property over here that we just created here, the uh, link tag. So that's all working. Um, the next thing that I want to do is um, have the ability to basically pass in data uh, dynamically. So now we have everything here inside of our uh, markup. So one, uh, these values, but I want to pass them in uh, dynamically as attributes. So I'm going to delete those. And in our markup, what I want to do is, for example, I want to have a, a symbol attribute, which will, for example, be uh, for GI, and then the name, which will be GitHub, and then the link to our uh, the, the link for our web element. Uh, so this would be GitHub, github.com, and then my profile. If I want another one, uh, for example, for Reddit, Reddit, and then I could do Reddit over here. And if I have another one for uh, the Arch Wiki, and then I'm gonna set the name to Arch Wiki, Arch and no, Wiki, Arch Linux, and then org. So something like that. Now, right now, it doesn't understand it, uh, understand these attributes. It still has these hard coded, uh, values that we had earlier before, but I haven't saved this uh, yet. So that's why it's still picking up those values. So what we can do inside of our render method, uh, we can, um, let me go below here and we can access our shadow DOM again. And then we, I want to use the query selector to get my H tag and then set the H ref equal to, uh, this dot get attribute. So this is basically defining the property for our custom attributes over here. Now we are gonna rename it link over here. So we can pass in link over here. And um, another one for our, uh, let's see, h1. And then I want to set the NAHTML value equal to the attribute that I pass in for uh, name or not symbol, I mean. Did I name a symbol? Yeah, symbol. 
Then we can have another one for our paragraph tag. And that's going to get the attribute for name. Now we also have uh, these uh, numbers here at the top. And for that, so that it will increment increment automatically, I'm going to have a static uh, property over here uh, called num, which will be zero uh, at first, and then uh, increment each time we have a new uh, instance, basically, of our component. So I'm going to put that here at the top, this dot shadow root, uh, query selector, our span tag in our HTML and set that equal to plus plus uh, web element num. Okay, I think that should be it. Yeah, and now you can see we have our custom components over here with all the uh, uh, data or values that we passed in uh, our attributes over here. Now one thing I need to because now we have these uh, href, so I need to add some styling for my uh, anchor element, uh, none, and then the color. I'm going to set the color to a variable that I have created, color white. Now, if I save this, yeah, it has to reload two times. Uh, yeah, as you can see, now we have don't have the default styling for our links, and everything works. So if I click on uh, this over here, it will redirect me to GitHub, my GitHub profile. And I have super slow internet. But yeah, that's not the point. But as you can see, our component is working and uh, it is still relatively easy to build your component as long as you have something simple. But it's still a lot of boilerplate uh, that you need to write, as you can see. But for something like uh, what we are building over here, uh, it's pretty useful. Uh, something that I want to add as well is that we haven't touched everything that is uh, uh, basically available uh, within your custom web component. For example, there are a couple of other lifecycle methods that we haven't touched, like disconnected, uh, call, back. Uh, there's also the uh, attribute change. Um, actually, yeah, the attribute change, call, back uh, methods as well. And they also have their own uh, purpose. So disconnected callback is basically invoked whenever our component is disconnected from the document. This basically tries to keep track of any changes to our attributes, as the name would suggest. So it keeps track of uh, attributes that we are adding, removing, or changing. But since there's no use case for us in this specific uh, component, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna add uh, add these. So yeah. I think that's it uh, for this video. Uh, hopefully it was useful and you can also, uh, maybe you have created something that you can use on your own as well, like this uh, simple start page. You can create your, uh, uh, you can basically set your own uh, favorite websites over here and then set this as your own custom start, start page in your browser. Yeah, so hopefully you learned something uh, and it was useful. And if you're new to this channel and you would like to see more content like this, please don't uh, forget to leave a like, also subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or comments, please uh, write them below in the comment section.